this event was more formal, as a way for people to flex their formality. What, you got bust out a Rolex wristwatch? What the hell are you doing? <laughs> Bruh, look at this dude. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise swearsies, it's just a fact, and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. This is the continuation of the Athena slash Counselor Beard saga. If you haven't seen those yet, you might could catch yourself up with the links in the description. If you don't fully remember, well, don't worry either. If you have seen them and don't fully remember, well, don't sweat that either. Because I read it and uh, only remember some choice bits. But I'm sure our memories will be refreshed. It's going to be great. Come along with me. Take the ride into yet another r slash Legbeard story. Athena's attempted arranged marriage, a Legbeard story, part number three which is also kind of a branch off of the Counselor Beard stuff, though it doesn't seem that they intersect all that much, aside from going to the same church. Anyways, OP says, hey, <laughs> it's Achilles back again, and welcome back indeed. Sure, it's been about 83 years, and the Titanic has long since slipped into the icy deep, but I am here. Yeah, still thinking about a boy that you just banged one time in a car rather than your faithful and devoted husband. It's the worst love story ever made. Wifey loves it, she loves it more than The Notebook, which is insane to me, but it is the worst love story ever made. I had a weekend fling, oh my, that was some good <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm off on such a tangent, sorry. I'm not gonna lie, I got super busy, again, that happens. Work ramped up, classes royally kicked my ass, and I had to go through the nightmare of finding affordable housing in a West Coast city. Twice. <laughs> oh my god. My heart does go out to you. I'm so glad to be relatively settled at the moment. I'm glad you're getting it locked down again, though. We power through. We get bigger and better. Fortunately, I'm now residing in a cute little townhouse with roommates, and am in my school. Should be my last year of undergrad college. It's still up in the air whether or not I'll go straight to the workforce or go into grad school. Look at you, your life is traveling down a path and I love to see it. Take all the time you need between stories. Like, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> anyway, like I said, I'm back and ready to finish this story for you guys. I didn't want to make you wait any unspecified amount of time before the next part either, so I've put everything all into this post, so it might be long-winded. Apologies in advance. I've been hungry for a long-winded video, honestly. I thought about going back in for the, the Wolfbeard Redux. Red X Redux? That sounds really good to me. Reliving Sir Sam after so many years? It could be cathartic. There I go, though. Making things more long-winded. <laughs> if you'd like to catch up, you can read the first two parts in these links, or you can have them narrated to you by Red X in these links. Let's not waste too much time, and we can just get on into it. The cast is the same as before. Simply copy and paste Athena. Early 20s, around 5'2", with long brown hair and blue-green eyes. A bit on the chubbier side, with a bubbly personality. Jason is Athena's fiancé, around 6 foot, muscular slash chubby, so muscular but not defined. He has strawberry blonde curls and green eyes, introverted, slight only child syndrome, <laughs> but well-meaning. Very much head over heels for Athena, also in his early 20s, same birth year. And the good thing about marrying an only child is you're already got an in with the in-laws. As far as what only child syndrome means in a spouse, spoiled, selfish, maladjusted, bossy, antisocial, lonely, also a high achiever though. Sounds like a nightmare to be married to, but maybe Athena could balance him out with the bubbliness? I don't know. <laughs> Alithia is Athena's younger sister, around 16 at this time, very similar in appearance to Athena, though 5 foot 6 with a rounder face. There's also Achilles, yeah, that's your OP. <laughs> Hephaestus, the minister, around 5'8 to 5'9, a Lebanese man in his late 30s, quickly approaching his 40s. I think he's the one that's trying to weasel Athena away from the fiance. Everybody could go ahead and boo and hiss. Boo this man! <laughs> but he's not alone in his villain role, he's also got Metis. The Legbeard in question, who really is the mastermind of it all. Athena and Alithia's mother, in her late 50s, hair entirely gray and constantly pin straight, around 5'7". There's also Thetis, my mother and Metis's co-worker, 
five foot seven with curly black hair and nearly black eyes, late forties at this time. Nice, nice. Some things are starting to come back to me. So, something I completely forgot to highlight in the first part was that engagements were a limited time deal in order to prevent excessive amounts of lust and temptation. The church ensured that engagements lasted no longer than one year, save for extraneous circumstances, such as a death in the family or a move or whatever. On top of that, during the engagement, breakups were much harder to incite because of consistent counseling with ministers. This meant that Athena's mother, Metis, was working on a limited time scale. Oh good, the clock's against her. You'll never beat time. None of us do. <laughs> Athena and Jason were going to be given the okay for an engagement sometime soon, and when that happened, it would take nothing short of a family death or someone coming out of the closet in the middle of a counseling session for the engagement to be dissolved. It's weird how hard they're pushing that marriage thing, isn't it? But I guess they want you to be married in the church and raise your kids in the church. It's sort of like a, a political marriage, isn't it? I wonder what the counseling sessions are actually like. They're like, oh, you're having trouble in your marriage? You guys should have a baby. <laughs> That'll fix everything. <laughs> How about new? Uh, uh, OP continues. I also wanted to clarify that yes, like what Red X suggested in one or maybe both of the narrations for this saga, Hephaestus was completely unaware of Midas' plans. Yeah, but he's still a 40-year-old dude marrying a 20-year-old. I have other reservations. <laughs> uh, thinking back, I believe that no one was really in on it, save for her. Those are the scariest schemes. Those are the schemes that often work. Metis' husband, Athena's father, was entirely supportive of Athena and Jason's relationship, and Hephaestus showed zero interest in Athena romantically. Metis' focus on Hephaestus seemed to be based on the fact that, at the time, he was the youngest eligible minister, with the highest amount of that all-so-important church clout. Yeah, that'll pay the bills. They give you a house to live in and everything. This seems like a thing that should be settled with a good old-fashioned sit-down. Mother and daughter talking it out. What do you want for your future? Not all of these japes and hijinks. You young people, I'll tell you. <laughs> Which is funny because she's got gray hair and she's in her late 50s. Anywho. <laughs> of course, the first step in Midas' master plan was to sow the seeds of doubt in Athena's mind. The hiking trip was the perfect time to do so. You see, as illustrated earlier, ministers and their wives had very comfortable lives. They could just go out on spontaneous hiking trips and talk about the abundance of blessings that came with marriage. And while sure, they were talking about everyone, the only examples of abundance came from their own lives. Hey guys, isn't this nice? Isn't it super cute to spend other people's money? Oh, money. <laughs> Hello, I like money. Uh, yeah. Remember how I said that Hephaestus, though favored by higher up ministers, was blocked from growing in rank due to not being married? Well, I never really explained what that meant. Mainly because it meant a lot of things. <laughs> Those higher ranks came with higher pay, good healthcare plans, those nice houses on the church's property, or being put as head of another congregation with a house paid for by the church as compensation. Shit, I'm in the wrong business. God, it really is a racket, isn't it? I think attending church, communing with your brothers and sisters, and growing spiritually is a very important thing for one's mental and social well-being. Do I want to get baptized and join up and start giving you money? Nah, not really. <laughs> and eventually, I'm sure patients will wear thin. They'll be like, look, you got to pay your dues. <laughs> Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah! Uh, that's what I just uh, go back into my shell. Retreat forever. It really does all boil down the money, doesn't it? Continuing on. Athena, as a minister's wife, would get to live in luxury without having to go through the oh so strenuous bore of having a job. She'd be swimming in church clout and would be showered in gifts and praise, all for being an emblem of pristine womanhood. <laughs> uh, yeah, up on a pedestal you go. Sure, you might be miserable inside, but think about what everybody else will feel. 
Like, okay, well, objectively, that doesn't matter in my experience. And then, when Athena would inevitably get pregnant, that is not an if in the church, it's a when, each baby would be praised as an example of the godliness in her home, and a shining piece of evidence about how God blesses the church and its ministry. That's the evidence, huh? A baby? <laughs> Where's the money, Lebowski? Where's the f money, shithead? Oh, it's <laughs> I don't know, man. Lots of people have babies. <laughs> the closest comparison I could think of in terms of how ministers' wives were viewed slash expected to act would be the current Princess of Britain, Princess Catherine. Calm, poised, well-dressed, modest, and motherly. There were high expectations for a minister's wife, but there was also high compensation to go along with it. You think the royals are happy? Probably not. Highest compensation I in the world. Citation needed. <laughs> and they're still not happy. And you're gonna do it for church clout? Sell your daughter out? She is. She really is. This is a mental disorder. <sighs> Continuing, Athena, a girl who perpetually dreamt of being a princess, could be the closest thing to a princess in the church's eyes, all by marrying the right man, a minister. Meanwhile, what did Jason offer? Well, sharing a peer group probably goes a long way. <laughs> I mean, sure, Jason was a good guy, but he was years behind others his age in the field that he wanted to grow into. Pay no mind to the fact that this was due to the church dangling a carrot in front of him for years in order to convince him not to go to college. He wouldn't be able to provide a nice house, at least not as quickly as a minister could, nor could he provide that illustrious church clout that meant your name was worth whispering over. Hell, Jason couldn't even go on a little hiking trip. He was too busy picking up an extra shift in the basement of the church's IT department. Wonder how that happened? See, Midas wants it all right now. There's no long-term game plan here. Good on Jason for picking up an extra shift. He's a hard worker, he's gonna do fine. They're gonna build the empire together. Hephaestus, he seems like a nice enough guy from the little that we know about him. But you better believe that a few years into that marriage, He's going to start lording some stuff over her. And then even beyond that, the marriage breaks apart. They spent like nine years together. What's this nine year gap in your resume? I signed an NDA. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. The cost is too high to just jump in with both feet like that. The safe and sane way to do it is let those kids build it together. Oh, he continues. Sure. Jason might be able to pull some strings together so they could live a few hours drive away from that little tourist town in a crap apartment, but a minister? No, Hephaestus, well, he could be granted a position as the ministerial leadership of the small congregations within western Idaho. She could have a house paid for by the church in that small town of her dreams, a possibility she probably never thought of until that hiking trip when her mother, Medus, questioned what possibilities Hephaestus could be looking at if he were to become a minister. Oh, what a coincidence. And about here's the point where you have to hope that Athena isn't swayed by the glitz and glam like her mother is. Hope beyond hope that she does not grasp the pearl of great price, if you take my meaning. <laughs> you could take that a few different ways. After all, from the church's perspective, Marriage was a permanent life decision. A decision that should be considered more of a business decision. Whoever she would choose, she would have to submit to until the end of her life. And submission is so much sweeter when it comes with a fancy house. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Submission is sweeter with someone you love and care about and, and have connected with. And I don't mean submission in the pillow by the way, so get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> uh, after the hike was done, Athena was invited over to stay at one of the minister's homes for lunch to rest and recoup. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> Seeing as that it was on the same street as the other minister's homes, including her own home, it wasn't as if it was out of the way, so she said yes. From what she had told me, it was a fairly innocuous event. She spent most of the time in the kitchen, eating lunch with the minister's wives as they probed her about a future engagement or, or wedding or how quickly she wanted kids, while the minister stayed in the living room talking about sermons, the Bible, revelation, the usual. So, yeah, fairly innocuous. Yes, harass the young woman to reproduce. The men must go into the living room to talk about what we saw in our dreams. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's innocuous, I guess. Save for the fact that this was essentially Medus giving her daughter a taste of the life of a minister's wife. A big white kitchen with an island and a big glass sliding door to the backyard where the young ones would play. Meanwhile, her father and the other ministers spoke about Jesus to one another in front of the fireplace. It was idyllic, in every sense of the word, and a life that only the church's most eligible ministerial bachelor could offer. What is this, the dating game? <laughs> this is your real life. You're playing with a human being, your own progeny, and she's just gonna sell her up the river. This is the way things have to be. I can't see it, man. I can't do it. <laughs> It was everything that Athena was told to look forward to in life. And no doubt, it was the carrot that her mother had planned to dangle on a stick in hopes that Athena would make the right choice. Athena is going to make the right choice. The right choice being somebody around her age that she can learn and grow and experience life with. I believe in these two kids. I ship it. <laughs> well, fortunately for Jason, Athena hadn't seemed to connect the dots to her mother's schemes, and the other ministers' wives weren't exactly in on the scheme either. Instead, they chatted her up about her future with Jason, and everyone, except for Metis, just kept hyping Athena up for the whole event. Heh, <laughs> sucks to suck. <laughs> While their husbands didn't view Jason as minister material, that didn't mean the wives didn't like Jason. Like me, he had grown up in the church, and was practically seen as a nephew. They were all ecstatic, and I can only imagine how upset Midas was, when the wives chatted about how sweet Jason was, and how excited they all were to go to his wedding. His wedding. Interesting choice of words. I'm sure if the person Athena was dating was outside of the church, they'd all be fallen right into Midas' trap unknowingly forcing this social contract that the entire sect seems to have signed. But it's just Jason, come on, it's good old Jason. Bro, Jason's the guy that she tells you not to worry about. <laughs> Citation needed, again. Still, however, through all of this, Midas was not to be dissuaded. So the church likes to host, um, events. Yeah, I've heard about some of these events. I don't know if I like it. <laughs> Basically, this is the way that the church encourages people to be more formal, for lack of a better term. These events were usually just them renting out an entertainment hall. Typically, the types you see for indoor weddings or business meetings, they slap up a dance floor to be surrounded by tables with white cloths and people eat catered food and do dances, which are, of course, Jesus approved. <laughs> huh? Oh, yeah, fine. <laughs> There's usually some type of speech about the goodness of God and how blessed the church is. Blessed indeed. Please enjoy more of these microwave taquitos, which I've so graciously provided. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they do taste even better, though, because they're God's microwave taquitos. <laughs> <laughs> While Metis was not assigned to help design this event, she very much inserted herself into the planning. Her willingness to work for free is exactly what put her into the good graces of the church, of course. This particular event was yet another singles event. While most singles event were casual, hiking, bowling, pool, this event was more formal, as a way for people to flex their formality. What, are you gonna bust out a Rolex wristwatch? What the hell are you doing? <laughs> Bruh, look at this dude. 
<laughs> if you've read or listened to the Counselor Beard Saga, you definitely get it. And if you haven't, that's also been narrated by Red X in a playlist in the description. I think I probably should keep them as separate sagas. Did Counselor Beard rap? Do we need to compile that now? I don't know what's going on anymore. I'm just very glad to be feeling healthy again. <laughs> Continuing on. Normally, engaged people didn't attend these singles events for obvious reasons, but Midas begged for Athena to come as a helper. It's probably the most devilish thing you can do, scheming against your own daughter in the name of the church. It's a real dystopian hell you're taking me through here, OP. <laughs> Naturally, a lover of formal events and romance, Athena was excited to help. Unfortunately for my mother, Thetis, she was assigned to help this event. It wasn't as though my mom didn't enjoy doing these type of events. Quite the opposite, she loved them. But she wasn't looking forward to butting heads with Midas for the duration of the planning. My mom's more aggressive, get-going attitude did not mesh well with Midas's passive-aggressive guilt-tripping. I don't think we get along either. This is the worst way to be. Tell me directly what you want. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately for me, and all of you readers, this led to my mother ranting endlessly about Midas' behavior to my long-suffering father, who <laughs> uh, was probably trying to watch something, and me, who made many attempts to be in earshot. According to my mother, Midas did everything in her power to keep Athena from actually working, instead trying to push her to mingle and spark conversation. This, of course, was much to the chagrin of my mother, who was frequently trying to get Athena to do actual jobs. <laughs> Not particularly difficult jobs, of course, just simple jobs that Athena would be interested in, i.e. table setting, picking flower arrangements, helping with music. My mother saw it as a way to kill two birds with one stone. The event would be set up, and Athena would get some experience in preparing for her own wedding reception. It should have been simple, but no. It seems like Athena's just too nice and compliant to tell her own mother off. Like really, what am I supposed to do? Stand over here and talk to these people who are also trying to work? Leave me alone, mom, gosh. It's not just a phase. <laughs> <laughs> Athena, can you help with the flowers? Actually, Athena, you should go talk with generic blonde man number four to get a conversation going for all these young kids, right? Hello, fellow kids vibes. Eventually, something's got to give. Tell her straight up. Did you bring the kid here to work or not? All she's doing is distracting an additional worker. It would be a net gain if all of you went home. Might not win you any friends, but it'll certainly show some cojones. <laughs> Rinse and repeat this garbage for the whole planning period and also the actual night of the event. Yep, should nip this one right in the bud, I'm telling you. For those of you who read this and got all excited that this meant that Midas had given up hope on getting Athena to marry Hephaestus, what was that moment of bliss like? Sweet? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it, because that sweetness was a creation of your own imagination. Oh, you thought I forgot about Hephaestus because of random blonde man? Nope, never happened. Legbeards are doggedly determined, okay? <laughs> if there's one thing we know, beards could move mountains if they only focused in the right places. Their energy potential is enormous, and that is trace amounts of science. <laughs> <laughs> the primary reason that Midas was so desperate to get Athena into the event was because she was under the impression that Hephaestus, a single man, would inevitably show up to the singles event. And in all fairness to her, that wasn't a necessarily bad assumption to make, Hephaestus did frequent the singles events. After all, his single status was the biggest thing standing between him and the upper echelons of ministry. That night was the exception. The Lord certainly does move in mysterious ways. When you do things right, people won't be sure you've done anything at all. Something, something, important minister, Bible study, something, something. I don't know the details, but <laughs> basically... <laughs> Huh? Uh, basically, there was some important minister Bible study with a handful of ministers and the general pastor, 
for reasons that my 16-year-old brain didn't really care to probe about for more information on. Just facts. People doing stuff? That's cool. I got my own stuff going on. <laughs> uh, despite not being one of the upper pastors in terms of rank, he did live closer to the general pastor than other ministers, and this was some sort of emergency. I like to think it was a slumber party. <laughs> but that's just wishful thinking. All the pastors getting into their jammies and having pillow fights. Oh, mommy's letting us stay up late and have cookies. We get to play on the SNES. Oh my God, the SMBS. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, after this event, <laughs> I didn't hear much about Midas's scheming. Or if I'm honest, I got busy. I don't know, I was 16 and in a new school. Realized I wasn't quite straight and got a girlfriend, secretly, obviously. I was too busy giggling to myself about how cute my girlfriend was to care about the ramblings of an old woman with the backbone of a Swedish fish. Back in my day, there was no McDonald's. If you wanted an apple pie, you baked a damned apple pie. Any female born after 1993 can't cook. All they know is McDonald's. Charge they phone. Twerk. Be bisexual. Eat hot chip and lie. <laughs> I don't know if anybody knows what I'm talking about. But they're really impartial to the, the ramblings of old people. That's going to be this whole channel in like 30 years. You know that, right? I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, he said, yeah, so sue me. Oh, yeah, if you sue me, I'll counter sue. <laughs> anyway, I didn't hear much from her until after Athena and Jason officially got engaged. You'd think that now that it was official, Midas would let up, right? After all, by this point in the relationship, the church generally frowned upon couples breaking up. No more monkey shines, I said! Engagement was serious business. Quite literally. <laughs> and it was more often that an engagement would just be extended than a relationship to actually end. At least not without ministerial consideration. God, it's all just so creepy, isn't it? I just wanted to bask in the warmth of God's love with a, a group of like-minded individuals. But not like this. Not like this. <laughs> so naturally, one would come to the conclusion that Midas was no longer committing to her shenanigans, right? Right? Wrong! Before he even said it, I knew. You think she's gonna stop scheming after they get married? No! But that's okay, you got a new set of parents. You go hang out with Jason's parents more often. <laughs> uh, they're nicer anyways. Continuing on, uh, do you remember how OP said that Athena, a dutiful daughter of the church, still lived at home? Well, guess who suddenly was coming late to marriage counseling, missing important letters about venues, missing her wedding dress appointment, and missed a few dates? Well, Athena. Midas seemed to go out of her way to forget that Athena needed a car, or that she got an important letter, and she just never says anything about it. This is gaslighting. It has to be considered abuse on some level. That is insane! You're tampering with people's mail? I'll see you in Leavenworth. No, but seriously, tampering with the mail is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was the final straw? Well, if you're old enough to remember from my last contribution to this saga, it was bowling. Was that the cliffhanger? I definitely didn't remember that. <laughs> I guess I am getting old. This was a general youth bowling event, not necessarily a singles event, and it was catered toward people between the ages of 16 and 26. Most of the people in the church around that age had either grown up together or were relatively new and needed to make friends. Bowling was one of the few events that was considered Jesus approved <laughs> for whatever reason. <laughs> and there was a greasy old bowling alley not far from the church, so, it was just as convenient as it was Jesus approved! <laughs> Why bowling of all things? Is golf Jesus approved? Please, God, tell me Counter-Strike is Jesus approved! <laughs> Our Father, who orbs in heaven, see us be thy game.
<laughs> Sorry, son. Not Counter-Strike. Only Rainbow Six Siege. <laughs> Athena loves bowling, and Jason loves to watch Athena love bowling. Plus, the TV played Insert Sports Here that he and some of the other guys watched. The minister chosen to watch over this event, naturally, was Hephaestus. It's a really weird type of cuckoldry thing going on that Midas has had planned. I'm deeply disturbed. <laughs> Hephaestus was the youngest minister. The other ministers figured the youth would be more comfortable with him there. Yes, who, who shall we send to rally the youth? <laughs> Let's send a 40-year-old man. Yeah, super comfortable. <laughs> well, sometime between bowling splits, eating greasy nachos, and making fun of insert rival sports team here, Hephaestus pulled Athena aside to talk to her. Obviously, since it was a private conversation, I'm not privy to what exactly was said, but when Athena returned, the gist of it was that he had been told some concerning things from Metis in private about Athena's relationship with Jason. And naturally, he wanted to do his job in ensuring she felt safe about going through with this marriage. Bro, what the f***? You gonna ask me this in the middle of a bowling alley? How about we bring this up at the mandatory counseling sessions? <laughs> what are you talking about? I am mystified. <laughs> well, at this point, Athena finally figured out what her mother was trying to do and had started to edge her out of the wedding planning. Good plan. Which, due to the nature of how weddings were handled in the church, wasn't too hard of a thing to do. The planning itself took about a year, and most of the big details were handled by the minister's wives since the wedding was going to be on church grounds. Oh, now this is kind of a reverse cuckoldry thing. Hephaestus and Metis are going to be made to watch from the closet, and they'll end up crying, and then they'll bang each other while they cry. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is getting really weird. <laughs> so, what happened next? Well, OP says, I, I moved. Athena and Jason got married about four or five months after I moved across the country, and as far as I could tell, it went well. Metis wasn't happy about it, considering she made, like, zero posts about her daughter's wedding, but there wasn't anything else she could do about it. I mean, I don't really post about much that goes on in my real life on social media, but I mean, a 60-year-old woman not posting on Facebook, it kinda is a big deal, isn't it? <laughs> I'm serious, though. I was around 18-ish when they got married, so that's been, like, what, six years? I left the church shortly after, unrelated reasons, and I lost touch with most people, but I still follow Jason, Athena, and Alithia on Instagram, so here are your updates. Ooh, stocking social media for content. <laughs> Hephaestus is still unmarried, oof. Though I'm entirely unsure about his relationship status, he isn't exactly active on Instagram with the youths. Maybe Hephaestus is in the closet. Maybe it was Jason that he was after this whole time. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Alithia came out as queer, dyed her hair, got piercings, and left the church, obviously. She doesn't talk to her mom anymore, and is currently in a relationship with a non-binary partner. Jason and Athena did not move to Western Idaho, but did move to Colorado, where Jason got his degree in beep boop tech stuff. They seem to be doing well for themselves, as well as you can in this economy, and they did end up getting a large puppy. They've also left the church. As far as I've been told, it happened after they moved across the country. As for Metis, well, she and her husband are still part of the ministry of that church, a church that, from what I've been told, has been decreasing in numbers. Yeah, I guess to a certain point, people find it a little weird, you know? All in all, I'd say that this is indeed a happy ending. Could have been happier had Midas just been supportive of her daughter's wedding, but I suppose there are worse endings. Such as Athena, a woman not even yet 30, ending up with a man who'd be like 50 by now, if I remember his age right. Ugh. That's no guarantee. <laughs> Thank you so much for bearing with me through this snail of a schedule. So as a treat 
I will give you this little key. In Greek mythology, Metis is the mother of the goddess Athena. Jason was a hero favored by the gods. Hephaestus assaults Athena because he's told that they were meant to be. Fortunately, not what happened here. Thetis is the mother of the hero Achilles. Alithia is Athena's half-sister and a lesser-known goddess. While obviously the relationships aren't one-to-one, -one, I tried. I'm super impressed by that, OP. I've loved that throughout this saga. Mythology is cute. Sorry if this ending is a bit rushed. I wanted to make sure I actually posted it instead of saving, going to class, and forgetting until months later. Anyway, have a great fall. Hope you get all the soups and hot chocolates you could ask for. Oh, wifey's making soup tonight. And that's proof to me that I've been blessed. And of course, all the lovely people who decided to click on this video and watched it this far. Good lord. Thank you very much. Overall, I do think that Midas would have continued her meddling and that might have been the genesis for the move. Or the genesis for their exodus. <laughs> uh, the Bible people understand it. Okay. <laughs> it was an interesting story. I'm glad her scheme failed. I was hoping she'd have a meltdown at the end about it or something, but ah, she took it with relatively good grace, I suppose, as far as we know. I hope that you guys enjoyed this story. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all them things. I'm linking Counselor Beard on the end card, so if you haven't seen the start, you can rewatch it right now. Refresh your brains on what happened. But I warn you, not all story paths are as wholesome and good as this one. Finally, before I leave today, I just wanted to remind you, friends, that you are loved. You are worthy. You definitely, definitely deserve it. And I shall see you in the next one. So until then, bye-bye. Go ahead and cut them open. It's gonna be fine.